Hey, kids. Welcome to the 2021 AP Computer Science Principles a Create Task Semi-Speed Run. Kids, if you made it to this video here, you're probably a little confused on what the create task is and how to submit it. And through this video and a series of a couple other ones, I hope to help you and break that down so it's a little easier for you to understand. Because honestly, this isn't too bad of a project. It isn't out of any more scope than what we've been doing in the make tasks for the last couple of units. Your first question is probably, well, what is the create task? Well, the task itself is really just creating an app, but it has multiple parts to it. You have to make a video. There's this written submission that goes along with this rubric, which we'll cover in another video. And you have to submit your entire code. And all of this has to be uploaded to your digital portfolio on the AP College Board. This video is really going to focus on what the Create Task is this year and the key things your app should have in it. Now, before we get too far into it, kids, I have a little warning here. Please, oh, please, oh, please watch out for videos oh, prior to 2021. The task has completely changed from then. Nothing at all from prior years will help you this year. I'm sorry, kids. If you look here, these videos that I didn't even think were searchable were some of my top videos today. And kids, whoever's watching these, it wasn't helping you. Point of this is, kids, please watch out for any videos that have the date 2020 in it or anything earlier. Because again, as you will learn here, the task before was more about functions and loops. And this year, it's more about lists and parameters. Well, what are these major changes? And these major changes are really this. And if you take anything away from this video that your program has to have, it is these four takeaways. The program you submit must have some sort of user interface which you can input something and something is outputted. And we've done a ton of things like this. This could be as simple as putting a number in and getting a number out or selecting from a drop down menu to get a certain picture and a different output. Again, kids, all this is saying is that the user or the person rating your app has to have some way to interact with it. And then something has to be done once they interact with it. Key takeaway number two, your program must create and use a list of information. That means you must create a list, kids, and it must be a major part of your program. A good example of a list is a think back to our list make projects when we just added a bunch of reminders to the list. Our input was the reminder that the user inputted, the output, was the actual reminder up here. And we added to a list as we went along. Good example of what we're looking for there. Next, your program has to have a function. And here's the key, kids. It has to have a parameter with an if statement and a loop. It has to have all three of those, a function. And remember, a function is just an abstraction. It's just a list of things that's happening that we repeat and we want to reuse. We just put it in a special block we can call to. That parameter is an input that changes. Here is a good example of a function with a parameter. As you can see here, we have our complementer app and we were passing the name that the user put into the app to the function. This would be an example of a parameter. Now, well, this parameter does not have a if statement or a loop. An example of that might look like, now this doesn't have a parameter being passed, 
but with a loop and an if statement is from the Forecaster app right here. And you can see in this one, we're just accessing our list. So there's a hint of something your for loop should do, kids. Access the list that you're creating. And then if that number that it was the index of was something, then it appended a different list. So this right here is a little example of a for loop and an if statement. Probably the best way to do it is to have it traverse your list and then based off of an outcome, say if it's one, something happens, two, something else happens, three, something else happens, is probably your best bet if you're looking for an idea, kids. And your last takeaway is you have to comment anything that you use. Images, sounds, other code that you borrowed from Stack Overflow, something a partner helped with in your comments of your code kids, make sure you are giving credit. Plagiarism, even how small, if they catch it, they will not grade your create task. Now, if you don't remember any of this stuff here, kids, or you're a little lost where I was at, or you just want a little more practice, here is a nice little reference for what unit corresponds to what they're asking. And you can see the procedures and parameters is unit seven. The algorithms with sequence selection and iteration is a four and five. And the parameters one is the one we just did in seven. That means if you're a little confused, go back, do some of the investigate practice and make lessons from that unit and it'll help you out with understanding it but hopefully it'll also give you some inspiration you can always do twists on the stuff that they showed you kids you don't have to reinvent the wheel remember that now what documents do you have really to get you through this kids you have probably seen this of this handout and this is the official instructions for the class kids i highly recommend reading through it Again, this is a big part of your final AP grade here. And if you don't get a three, you really kind of wasted all your time listening to me. Not that I don't appreciate it, but the goal here is to get the college credit. Well, the next two are probably the most important documents, kids. The first one is the rubric, and I'm not going to go too much in depth right now because our next video is really going to break this down row by row. But please, before you get there, take a read through it. There's some very specific language they use here. And just a simple read through will help you so much more when it is explained to you. The most important document here, and probably the most helpful, is a code.org survival guide. This pretty much is a one stop shop for everything create task. We'll start off with my little four takeaways that I gave to you, same things. Again, I'm gonna repeat them because they're worth repeating. Remember kids, your program has to have an input and output. Your program has to create and use a list. You have to have a function that has a parameter and if statement in a loop. And kids, you need to cite anything that you use that didn't come out of that amazing brain of yours. These next couple of documents we're actually gonna do in class. These are good warm ups on what an algorithm is, what it isn't, what is a function, what isn't a function. And it's a good project planner to help you narrow down some ideas. The really helpful part here is this organizer. And this part, you can start writing down your ideas to see if they meet all of the criteria. There's a little timeline where you can write out. And kids, this is the best part. There'll be a separate one just of this, which is not only your guidelines, but a checklist in an area for you to type everything out. If you look here, it really does give you everything you need to submit right here. Your video, your checklist, it even gives you a little advice. 
for doing this and some different things you need to do. And kids, we're going to handle the final checklist all in another video. Right now, we are just acclimating ourselves with what the task is. You'll have a checklist that you can check off. And then part for you to write and some advice on what you should be writing. So this is really amazing. And again, we're going to break this all down when we look at what a good program is and what a good program isn't. But the survival guide is really one of the most helpful things that I can give you because it breaks everything down for you to understand. Kids, to close this video, I really want to give you the best piece of advice that I can give, and that is to think this out. I know that sounds very simple and you're thinking, Mr. Rhodes, yes, yes, we always plan out our projects, but I'm serious. This is really your first app from scratch that we are developing. With that, I know how ambitious you can be and how quick projects can get away from students. There are really specific things they are looking for. And honestly, and I hate to say this, that if the piece of code that you're writing really doesn't fulfill anything on the screen or help it, it probably isn't worth your time. You're being asked to submit a program with very specific instructions. And that's the best thing that I can tell you. Understanding that and working within those narrow confines, this is honestly a very simple project and very easy points for the AP exam. Well, kids, that's part one of the AP Create Task 2021. Hopefully this video helped you understand the Create Task a little better.